Idaho Republican Mike Crapo is an original member of the Gang of Six. He joins us from Capitol Hill. Senator Crapo, welcome to Bottom Line. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. Good to be with you. Senator, there's word, as the president mentioned, of a plan on the table that would cut nearly $4 trillion, $3.7 trillion to be exact, from the federal budget over the next decade. News reports say that the plan is gaining bipartisan momentum in the Senate. What can you tell us about the proposal and about the fact, somewhat stunning, that 47 senators, including 23 Republicans, attended that morning briefing? Well, you're right. We have a plan. It's 3.7 to 4.7 trillion dollars, depending on the baseline that you use. But in reality, it's well north of 4 trillion dollars, in my opinion. It's balanced, it's comprehensive, and it's bipartisan. It will really give us, I think, the opportunity to have a paradigm shift in American fiscal policy that will help us to stop the spending spree attitude in Washington, put control in place of our entitlement problems, and reform our tax code in a way that will focus on developing the kind of growth that we need mm -hmm. to make America more competitive. Uh, Senator, as you well know, some in the Republican Party don't even want to hear the word taxes. If you say reform tax code, they feel that's another way for another way to say tax increases. Are tax increases, revenue increases, increases going to be a part of this plan? Well, this plan will be sure that there is revenue allocated to retiring our debt, but I'm one of those conservatives who doesn't believe that tax increases are healthy for our economy either. What we do is reform the tax code, broaden the base, and actually reduce tax rates and do so in a way where there is greater rate reduction than there is tax expenditure elimination, mm -hmm. which really addresses that question that we've been debating so heavily here in Washington. Bottom line mm -hmm. is, this is going to stimulate our economy, reduce rates, and generate a much larger economic pie from which we can apply revenues to debt retirement. Senator, on the reduction side, where would those spending cuts come from? Uh, everything is on the table. We are going to be having very powerful enforcement mechanisms to make sure that discretionary spending caps are followed for 10 full years. We have prominent entitlement reforms across the board, and we have an enforcement mechanism that will ensure that if somebody in Congress tries to get creative and start declaring emergencies or what have you, that we still have sequesters in place that keep us on our track. Senator, even a lot of the Republicans coming out of that meeting were somewhat optimistic. Joe Manchin of West Virginia, he said, we've gone from a gang of six to a mob of 50. He said the proposal shows great promise. If it has this much promise, why did it take so long? Well, as I said, it's comprehensive. And I mean, we are covering everything from Social Security to entitlements to discretionary spending to enforcement mechanisms to the most exciting and major tax overhaul that our country has seen in decades. And frankly, it just takes time to get it right. And by the way, this solution is well crafted. This is not one of those things where we're just throwing some exciting ideas out there. We have worked through the details. We've gotten into the weeds. And this is a solid plan that has been well developed. That's what took the time. How is this plan going to be combined with existing debt limit proposals then? Well, that remains to be seen. When we started developing this plan six or seven months ago, we were not focused on the debt ceiling battle. We were focused on America's debt crisis. And we all believe that our proposal is much more properly viewed as a major first step in realigning America's fiscal policy to address our debt crisis. If this solution can be also used as a part of the debt ceiling battle that Congress is in right now, so be it. But the, the exact mechanism or steps to do that have not yet been identified. Senator, would this have been a lot easier if those two had been separate deficit reduction and debt ceiling talks? Oh, I think it would have been a lot easier. As a matter of fact, uh, the, the fact that we are just now coming out with our debt crisis proposal uh, at the same time as the crescendo is developing over the debt ceiling battle mm -hmm. is um, perhaps unfortunate, but maybe it will work out for the better anyway, because it could end up that some of our ideas or all of them could become a vehicle to help us get past the debt ceiling crisis as well. Senator Crapo, what's the likelihood that this plan gets brought before the Senate prior to that August 2nd deadline for default? And secondarily, can you get a filibuster-proof majority of 60 of your fellow senators to sign on to this? 
Well, I don't know the answer to either one of those questions. I think that the likelihood is increasing significantly given the response we got from 50, about 50 senators today. Very positive response on a bipartisan basis. Uh, whether that means we can get 60 votes for this, I'm not ready to predict it yet, but I think this is the best thing that we've got going out there right now. It is the only bipartisan solution, and it is a big solution. Let me again say this is a three to four and a half trillion dollar solution that will seriously change America's fiscal policy. Now, how significant is it that Oklahoma Republican Senator Tom Coburn returned to the Gang of Six? He, like yourself, was an original member of that bipartisan group charged with reaching a deficit reduction deal. But as you know, two months ago, he left the talks because of a disagreement with Dick Durbin over cuts to entitlement programs. Well, I think it's very significant that Tom came back to the talks uh, for two reasons. One, the issue that faces our nation is too important for political battles to cause it to stall. And Tom recognized that, and so he came back in and helped us get to the final finishing line on our negotiations. I also think it's important because it shows a united front on both the Republican side and the Democrat side of this group of three Democrats and three Republicans trying to build a bipartisan solution to move forward. Senator Crapo, in our last minute, a lot of folks have come on the air here at Bloomberg Television, and they've told us just how toxic the atmosphere is in Washington. You've been in these, in these meetings. You've been in the Senate for a while. Have you ever seen it this partisan? No, I have not, and toxic is probably as good a word to use as any. Uh, virtually every issue is fraught with incredible political peril. Uh, all of the knives are out, if you will, from every special interest group in America. All of the battle lines are set, and it's trench warfare, literally. And I, I, I'm sorry to have to say that, but that's also one of the reasons, by the way, that it took us so long on a bipartisan basis to thread the needle and get through these toxic politics with a comprehensive solution. It's one of the reasons I'm so excited about the potential for what we have on the table now. Well, Senator, if I might ask you quickly then, if people are listening to this, how do they get a sense of good governance? How, how, governance, how do they get a sense that the lawmakers they sent to Washington can actually get anything done? If, if the knives are out, as you say, and if there is trench warfare, as you say, how do you govern? Well, you know, that is the, that's what members of Congress, Senate and House members together, simply have to do. We have to look past the individual politics and past the partisan politics and look at the good of the country. I think that's what happened this morning. You saw six of us come together and bring forward a big plan, and you saw almost half of the United States Senate on a bipartisan basis come to the room to discuss it because they are anxious to get something put together that will help our country get back on the right track and to do so in time. Senator Crapo, in about 10 seconds, is this country going to default or is there going to be a deal reached on the debt ceiling? I certainly can't give you the answer to that. My hope is that we do not reach a default, that we do get a deal before the debt ceiling extension expires. And uh, I, I think that there are many, many here in Washington who are doing everything they can, I'm among them, to try to make sure that that happens. Idaho Republican Senator Mike Crapo, one of the original members of the Gang of Six, joining us from Capitol Hill. Senator Crapo, thanks for your time. We appreciate it. Thank you.